Okay, I tweaked the um, the collision detection a lot more to make it feel much more like a game now and fluid and so you can't get stuck and glitch in the walls and stuff like that and I, I really think I got it in, in, in a state where the, it feels a lot more smooth so I figured I would just make a, uh, a part two of this video to show you guys uh, proper collision detection working and how to do it so first thing I did was I realized um, dy without dx wasn't that useful so I went ahead and actually added a uh, delta x as well and changed the walking code so that when you press left and right on the keyboard instead of just setting them to a you know setting a, a minus equaling x and plus equaling it by a constant I actually now accelerate him on the x and y or x axis in, in different directions based off of whether or not you're hitting left or right and the way I do that is I just do a gradual acceleration of 0.5 and then once he's going faster than his maximum speed I stop him at that maximum speed so if he hits left I gradually decelerate, uh, accelerate him in the left direction until he hits negative 6 if he moves right I gradually accelerate him by, by uh, offsetting dx not x uh, to the right and then stop him and if I'm not hitting either of those keys because I have an else uh, else if here and then the last else meaning I'm not hitting left or right I uh, apply a friction by just um, essentially attenuating or uh, de multiplying dx times itself or uh, equal to itself times 0.8 every frame which slows it down towards zero until it gets small enough where I just set it to zero and this using the absolute value uh, if the absolute value which means if, if the number gets small in either direction towards zero close enough I set it to zero so I went ahead and did that and then just like I add dy to y I add dx to x here and the reason why dx is useful is in my collision detection method now I don't need to perform the tests to see if I'm bumping my head or if I'm landing on a ledge unless it's possible for example I can't bump my head unless dy is less than zero no sense to test for that and get you know glitchy you know uh, glitchy movement when he's when he's when he's not on his way up same thing when I'm on my way down no need to test if I'm landing on a ledge unless dy is greater than zero and I do the same thing with the edges so I'm not rubbing against the right edge unless I'm going to the left and then same thing with with dx here and then I set dx to zero uh, if the collision correction occurs um, so this method's working quite well like I said, collision detection in games, especially in, in 2D games, is just one of those things where you got to dial it in until it works, and uh, this method seems to work quite well. Though looking at it after everything I've typed, it actually looks quite overwhelming. Um, so there we have it, uh, better collision detection. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and now, um, now that i got everything moving nice and smooth, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a quick change. A lot of games make it, so um, if you hit jump, the, the longer you hold the key down, the, um, the more of a jump you'll get. So the way I'm going to accomplish that is I'm actually going to make the initial jump much weaker. So maybe like four. Well, that's going to be terrible. I'll do eight. So now this will be the weakest jump he can do. But if you hold the key down, I'm actually going to make it stronger. And the way I'm going to accomplish that is using one of these scan code checks. If I'm holding up down, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually make this number that I have there much less or uh, much higher value. And I'm just going to, let's think, uh, 60 frames a second. So I don't know, something like this should do the trick. Now, of course, if I don't fix this real quick, I'm going to go ahead and have a problem where he essentially could fly because I'm not stopping him from going up forever. Oh, that's actually not too bad. So there's a weak jump, strong jump, weak jump, pressing and holding it. That's actually pretty freaking sweet. So he's kind of floating, so the longer it goes, I think the more it should attenuate. And that's kind of hard to do. Um, I guess one way to maybe make this work would be lessening this value. Let me see what happens if we just make it like that. And now it's not quite 
good enough jump. I think the easiest way to handle this would be to keep track of how much time it's been since he's hit space and then make it so it's harder for the jump to uh, exist. Um, that's a lot of work actually. I think this is good enough. So I want to I want to get on to showing you guys something else, which is pretty cool. Weak jump, just to get like here. And then high jump, cool. All right. So as you notice, he's not really animating, which is kind of lame. So when he goes left and right, I actually want him to like move. And the way I'm going to accomplish that is as he's moving, I'm actually going to keep track of the fact that he is, and then change his frame based off of the fact. So uh, the man struck or the, the man frames, there's only two of them. I'm gonna keep track inside of his struct, which animation frame he's on. And then I'm gonna start it out as zero, where I initialize him. And then if he's walking, um, one of the things I'm going to do right now is add a time to the game so I can just keep track of how many frames have passed. It's a good time reference for doing things like animation. So let me just quickly find the game state struct and I'm just going to go ahead and make something called time in here. And then I have to initialize this. So let me just go ahead and do that. And that'll make things a lot easier. Now when I call process, I can just add to that. And that makes things a lot easier because now if he's walking, which is the case where dx is not zero, meaning he's not standing still, and dy is zero, meaning he's on solid ground. Let me just add a third uh, thing in here. Actually, I want to use on ledge because that's a better check. Um, now I know he's on the ground. What I will do is I will actually animate him, and the way I'll do that is if game time modulo 60, this will be every 60 frames. Actually, I'm going to do 30. And then I'm going to flip which animation frame he has. So man anim frame equals if it's zero it's one else meaning it was zero or it was one it's zero. So now every 30 frames the guy will have a different animation frame. And to make that change take effect, when I draw him, I actually have to use the right animation frame for him. And the way I do that is, I just set a zero here. And I'm getting tired. All right. Oh, that's great. Now I don't see anything. What the hell happened? I lost him. I don't know what I did. I'm just going to keep hitting undo until I see what the heck I did. The joys of making YouTube videos. I always screw this up when I'm recording. All right, back to basics. What did I change? Oh, if I don't initialize DX, there's a chance when the game runs. He'll fly somewhere else. That's probably what happened. Yep. All right. Every 30 frames is pretty slow, so I'm going to go ahead and make that less. I'm going to make them every five frames. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty fast. I want to go every eight. That is perfect. Now you'll notice he's not turning. He's not walking in the right direction. And when he's done, he's getting stuck on the wrong animation frame. So the first part's easy. All I got to do is when I am frictioning him to slow down, I'm just going to set his 
animation frame to zero right away. And then to control whether or not he's flipped is actually pretty simple. I just create a new flag called facing left for the man struck. Where are you, man? There he is. Facing left. And that will start out to be zero. You can tell I'm out of practice with C because I forget to initialize things. And by default, he's facing, he is facing the left, so that was stupid. And then when I move with the keys on the keyboard, the man is facing left in this case. He is not facing left when I hit right. And now, when I draw him, you'll notice I use this SDL cop render copy X, which has this awesome argument at the end called flip. So all I need to do here is say we're going to flip him. I'm running out of space here. We're going to flip him if this is true. And this expression will evaluate to 1 if he is not facing left. And of course, it wouldn't be a game video if this didn't work the first time I tried it for some reason. Alright, let me just try to flip him always and see what I get. Well, it works when I do that. So I screwed up my facing left set. Facing left. Please. Oh, hold on. Flip him when facing left is one. This doesn't. Now I'm failing at making these YouTube videos today. Seriously. Oh, would help if I actually changed this based off of whether or not he was facing left or not. There we go. All right. And then I got him facing the opposite direction, so I just flipped this back to zero like I originally intended. And as you can see, he will actually now be facing the right direction. It's a little glitchy when he slows down, so that'll be the last thing I fix. Uh, Anim frame should stay zero. Oh, I know why this isn't working. It's because I have, I'm overriding this by checking to see if dy yeah. So, do I need another flag for that? This code here is is overriding the fact that I'm setting the frame back to zero. Um, I think the easiest way to handle this would be to make another flag because I'm lazy and just call it slowing down and initialize it. I don't talk that much when I get tired. I want to have to make these movies when I'm more awake. So slowing down will be true if he is slowing down. Which is the case. And then of course once he is not slowing down anymore, which means he's moving, he will not I'll reset the flag when I hit the keys left and right. And then slowing down will be the flag to know that I am not to override the animation frame I set inside process. And now we have nice non-glitchy animation that he like slides on his, on his shoes when he stops walking. <clears throat> so this is actually starting to really look like a game, guys. I'm actually getting kind of excited. So. Uh, Next time through, I'll talk about the concept of scrolling, hence side-scroller, and uh, possibly adding some enemies in here. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.